On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we are back with the unfixable Equinox, and today we're just gonna try more things, let's be honest. What is going on guys, I am Watch J Ergo, and today, like we said, we are back with Eric's sister's 2019 Equinox, mostly so people can run their mouths in the comments about how it shouldn't have been bought. I, I had to say it. Well look, it's bought and it has to work, so it's just one of those things that we have to fix. In Kansas, every third car you see on the road is this exact same car. Yeah, this is literally, I mean in the world, I think this might be the yeah. most sold Chevy of all time. All over the place. Anyway, they're gonna need fixed and it's a, an engine where no one's made any videos about it before because they're not failing that often, obviously. So, you know, it's just because just this one broke at 60,000 miles doesn't mean they all are. And honestly, it's, it's a really cheap engine to replace and if we need to replace it, we're gonna replace it. That's how that works out. It's basically a rap song. So. Uh, it's like that's a lot of replacing. Yeah. <laughs> so today we're here with the old LYX again, and we had one other idea. Really, my buddy Cody had one other idea. I said I did a leak down. It failed miserably. It was something like uh, cylinder one was 22% 22. 22 leakage, and then 70, 70, 80% leakage across the board, which is enough to condemn this engine. There's no doubt about it. Chevrolet says you should condemn this engine if you see 25% loss in a leak down. And 80%, well, it's trash. Now I have scoped all the cylinders, of course. I don't like what I'm seeing there. Uh, it does look like there's a little bit of oil uh, wear and some scarring in the cylinders, stuff like that. I don't like it. But with that said, every time we were doing the leak down, I could hear air rushing through the throttle body. If I covered the throttle body with my hand, it would shut up. So we do think air is coming back through the intake valves and leaking out. Hey, so how do you, uh, how do you like your coffee? Your coffee? Yeah, that's good coffee. You, uh, <laughs> you roast that? Roasted yeah. walnuts? Yeah. Anyway, a lot of you guys can probably already tell that our game plan for today is to walnut blast the valves in this thing. And that's because we pulled the intake off after we put the valve cover back on, got it all sealed back up, torqued down. We were ready to do a second leak down test and I was like, let's just stick the camera in there. And as soon as we saw what we saw on the camera, we decided there's no reason to do another leak down. We're gonna do the walnut blasting. All right, find me an intake valve. You're, you're just about there. Oh yeah. Oh, twist it. Ah yeah, all right, head on in. Look how nasty these valves are. And across the board, it's horrible. So we're in cylinder two right now? Yeah, yeah. I'm back in two. Look how bad that is. There must be a- Let's jump to four. That's a quarter inch of buildup on that valve. All right, that one's nasty. Pretty bad. Yeah, there's a big glob on the side of it there. Three. Big glob. That one doesn't look that bad. Oh, there's a big old chunk on the side of it. All right, go into one, because we know one was one perfect. One was the best. Yeah. Well, one was barely passable when I say perfect. Oh, that valve stem looks great. Okay, the bottom of it around the actual valve and the mating surface doesn't look great, but at least the valve doesn't have a, a ton of buildup on the side of the stem. Yeah. Anyway, that's what we found inside the LYX here. It looks very, very bad. Of course it's DI. It's super efficient. It gets amazing gas mileage. These are the prices that we pay for efficiency these days. A little more maintenance, but you get insane gas mileage. So that's why, that's why you just have to buy a new car every three years. As long as you get a new one every three years, which is right about where this is. I mean, this is actually five, six years old now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you get a new car every three years, you'll always have the ultimate gas mileage. That's kind of what it's turned into these days. And we did find these engines as low as $900 with like a year long warranty on them. So it's not a new one, it's a used one with comparable mileage, but a big old warranty that would let us swap it again if something went wrong. And it also looks like we could swap this thing really, really fast. I mean, there's tons of room under the hood. It would be, uh, it'd be a good day, honestly, in and out. So what we're gonna do now is set up this walnut blaster we've never used before. I stole this from the car ninja, shout out to him for letting me use it. And uh, we also needed to use this on my Volt, but we, I really want to do the BG Platinum service on there because we did that on a Camaro that was DI that I had, and that Camaro looked brand new inside after we finished doing that service. So if the engine runs, obviously do the PEA treatments like that, and if the engine is DOA like this one, you're gonna walnut blast it. So we're gonna get everything set up, hook up the air hose, uh, dump in a bunch of media into this blaster and show you guys what it's like to walnut blast. It's not gonna be fun because we don't have the right adapter for this engine, but we can get close. We're gonna put our shop back in there and we're gonna try 
not to make a huge mess. All right, guys, we're gonna start on cylinder one, even though we probably don't need to. I think you're at TDC, that feels nice. Go ahead, you're going down, keep going, just run it. Run it until we see this go all the way back up. It's coming up, okay. That was, man, we got a whistle out of it. You know, some TDC finders actually whistle. I think that's good. Now that we've got our valves closed, time to do some blasting. Oh, we need pressure. We're getting too much. We filled the whole thing with walnut already. Yeah. I don't have to work. I don't either. I'm not sure you guys are gonna believe this, but we we're still trying to get this thing set up. Like there's a lot of work to do really fast. You gotta be managing all three air pressures on this thing as fast as you can to do this walnut blasting. It's kind of a lot of nonsense if you don't have a perfect setup for it, which Johnny did give us this, but it's the BMW Volkswagen adapter for walnut blasting. And it's got a little hole that you shove your uh, valve section into, which we can't even use because the uh, pipe coming off the end of it's so long that we can't get it past the firewall. But it's got a shop vac adapter on one end. It's totally set up to be the perfect device. Well, you have to manage the valve on the bottom, which is walnut flow out of the chamber into the hose. And you have to manage um, the airflow into the chamber, how much pressure you're holding in it, which I want to be around like 70. But we had this thing working for, I promise you guys, 20 seconds before we ran out of air because then we're running out of air at the air compressor side because our air compressor won't just put out continuous volumes of air. So we're jumping back in here with the camera. We're in cylinder one, which is where we started. I'm gonna show you guys. Now there's still a bunch of walnuts in there. Whoop. But take a look at the valves. They look brand new after like two seconds. It looks brand new in there. So we're gonna make one more pass of course, this is a four valve, so we gotta go look at the other valve as well. But over here too, I didn't have enough time on this one. You can see there's still a little bit of buildup on the stem. But here in a couple of seconds, we're gonna have this completely done, then we'll blast out the valves with some air and uh, try to start it up. Obviously, it's not that simple. It will take uh, another hour to get everything put back together to start it up. So we gotta put the intake back, put the fuel rail back, whole lot of work and it's, it's raining ice outside too. I was like, just go get that ice and we'll blow that in the engine. Yeah, that's insane. <laughs> Not hail either, it's like sleet, something like that. Not something you see very often. But right now you're having to shake it to get it to the middle. Yeah, but that's because the, it, it's not a design that feeds well. Those, those tanks never lend, yeah, lend yeah. themselves to feeding. So Eric's uh, refilling the media over there and while we're blasting, he's having to shake the whole uh, pressure vessel there so that we can get it to dump more walnut into the hose. But over here, I wanna show you guys what we've done so far. So obviously we showed you cylinder one, it looked amazing. And now I'm gonna shove this thing in cylinder two that we just finished up. You guys can see what those valves look like. Look at that. You can see the machining from the CNC inside the head. It's beautiful. All right, here's another one. You can see just a couple pieces of walnut left over inside it. The valves look amazing. And now we're gonna switch over to cylinder three. So you can see what we're dealing with here. There's what we're taking out of these cylinders. Look at that big old gob on the valve stem. Woo-wee! It looks horrible. All right, over to the next valve. That is what we're taking out of there. And it's really, it's a lot of carbon buildup, but at the same time, I don't know if it was enough to make it stop running. Maybe this one was, look at that. Actual chunks of carbon coming out just because the camera touched them. I like your style. <laughs> Just easier. Yep. So on to the next one, we'll find TDC on three and we'll go ahead and close up and put a rag in two and start blasting three, move on to four, and then we'll have all of them done. And I still don't know if this is gonna make it run, but it was definitely something that was worth doing uh, because the valves did look terrible in this thing. Walnut blasting complete. And then we did another leak down just to see if valve seal was actually our issue. And we really think there's just no compression in this engine. So we have to put it all back together so we can crank it, obviously. We can't crank it without the fuel rail on there because the high pressure pump and all of these other things that have to be reassembled just be spraying stuff out everywhere. So unfortunately, just to continue testing, we had to reassemble everything. So we've got the rail back on, just finished hooking that up, intake, throttle body, everything's back on. So really all we have left here is the charge pipe. And once we get that on here, I'm hoping, I'm hoping we can put that on here and it's still out of the way. 
we should be able to get a compression test going and dump a little bit of oil in every cylinder, which will probably make it start. And if it does, it condemns the engine for us. So it definitely sucks that we had to rebuild the whole engine just to find out that the engine's trash. That's kind of where we're at here. You put that reluctor wheel back on. We, we did, the reluctor wheel never left. Oh, oh, I'm in the vacuum. The vacuum, okay. I was like, yeah, it's pressed onto the cam. Yeah. All right, so all we have left now is uh, oils, hooking up the fuel rail, done. And uh, hooking up this connector here, done. Putting this ground on, and uh, not much else. All right, guys, we just made a quick trip to O'Reilly's because we don't want to put expensive <laughs> oil in this thing if we're gonna have to throw the engine away. So we put it all back together. We had already drained the oil, of course, like you guys saw to check for metal. We got some uh, O'Reilly Full Synthetic Zero W20 to fill this thing back up. And then we're gonna throw the charge pipe on because it's the last thing on here and put some oil in each cylinder and then run a compression test because we really do think that this engine is finished. It's time to find out. It's the moment of truth here. We still don't think it's gonna run. I mean, we can spin this thing over. I can put a ratchet on it and give it like a big push with the spark plugs out and get it to spin over like two, three times, which is crazy. And with the plugs in, you can still easily turn it over by hand. And on the leak down tester, you can push it past 90 PSI of air. All of those things should be impossible, which really lends a lot of credence to this engine being trash, but we are trying everything before we condemn it. Obviously, Eric's sister doesn't wanna buy an engine. We don't wanna make her buy an engine if we don't have to do it. So we have exhausted everything. There's nothing we haven't checked on this engine. But Eric's inside and uh, battery should be fully charged. We are ready to try to start it up for the first time. Just as angry as it always was. Why did it start cranking faster? It sped up there at the end. Uh, go ahead and crank it again. I want to hear what's going on back here. As soon as I stopped recording, it tried to run. All right, you, you want to try or you want me to try? Didn't let me have any fuel. That was the first time it's ever run. Oh, the first time. Oh, it really wants to run now. Well, we cleaned, I mean, we cleaned a lot out of we, it. We did clean this thing like fresh, none other. Fresh oil. Yep. Should be fresh gas. Yep. It's gonna go, it's gonna go. <laughs> And then once all that happens, maybe we can get the valves to kind of reseat. Yeah, you have to let it run for a while, yeah. The other thing is, wow, it started instantly and smooth. Yeah, but it won't stay running. It won't stay running. And you still have no gas? <clears throat> it no never? Fuel, no fuel, we'll only have the pedal. Oh, it's trying. What's interesting is it killed the check engine light. Yeah, I'm sure, well, we had the, no, we never solid, disconnected the battery. I had a solid check engine light when Interesting. I got in it, and now they killed it. We need the jump pack, and it's not here. It's trying so hard to start. But I have no screen. I know, it always does that. It just threw the check engine light. I saw the check engine light came back. We always talked about how terrible the interface is on this thing, how it shuts the screen off while it's cranking. Makes no sense. The shop is full of white smoke after it started. Man, it sure tried to run. It has never tried to start this much. Nope, it wouldn't do this at all. All right guys, we found my compression tester. It's finally time to figure out how bad this thing is. I didn't like how the cylinders looked on this thing. Like I said, um, like scoring, scoring, all kinds of stuff going on with this engine that makes me think it was trash from the beginning. Well, the beginning of our troubleshooting here, but we're starting on the good cylinder, the one with the least amount of leak down. This is number one. Okay, stop. So we had over 210 PSI on cylinder one, which makes 
no sense at all. Go ahead and crank again. Yeah. I try to hit it twice and shut it off. I think you have to hold it to make it stop cranking. Hold it. I don't know. Just keep doing things until it stops cranking kind of thing. Guys, I don't understand what on earth is going on with this thing. Obviously, 210 is some crazy compression. I'm going back to one to see if we were right, but we had 210 on two as well. All right, crank it again. Well, a little over 210, and now we're on cylinder four. Why is compression good across the board, but leak down so bad? We've got it all back together again after that wildly successful compression test. 210 across the board with almost no deviation. Deviation looked like a 5% between all the cylinders. So now, I still don't know why we're failing leak down so hard. But I was like, why don't we start this thing on starting fluid? So we're gonna try that real quick. I went ahead and pulled the charge pipe back off the throttle body. We're gonna give it a shot of starting fluid and see if that makes a difference. Maybe it's fuel related because like the engine is sort of checking out good and sort of checking out terrible at the same time. So let's find out. All right, Eric, you ready? Start, start cranking. Uh, all right, I'm gonna try to feed it just a little bit. We think we figured out the problem. I was like, she put gas in it and then it died. Like, I keep going back to she put gas in it and then it died. And you guys know we've been over the timing. We know the compression 210 across the board. It seems like it's failing leak downs really hard. But the more we look at this. So you can see right to the bottom of the brown tent. Absolutely. You can't see the you bottom of the five gram bucket. I know it's But blue. also, it's perfectly clear. So pour some of this fuel in here real quick. Just pour, pour a little hair into this thing. We might blow the building up here, but you guys take a look at this. Pour for real. Yeah. Milky clear. Okay, now pour some of this in. I don't really care, because, you know, now we get all of our gas. Well, look how free. milky this, look at it now. It looks horrible. And it's stirred up a little. It looks horrible. Okay, now, look at that's gasoline. Yeah, I don't know. What is that? I, What's coming out of this car? I don't know. Guys, we have no idea. We do know there was one gas station around here that had some serious contamination issues, and she might have filled this thing up there, but, I mean, this is really, really bad. Unbelievable. Um, I'm mind blown. I've never run into this in my life, honestly. Like, bad gas yeah, is not a thing. You know what? What? That gas station. You think this is all ethanol? It could be all, it could be E85. Is E85 that clear? I don't know. You know, I never look at E85. But the, the Jumpstart does. Yeah, the, they've got the mega mixer pumps and they do, uh, they, they put like E30 and everything. I don't think that's E30. And I do think this thing should, I don't know if it has a flex fuel setup, but I think it, it should do it. It doesn't say it's flex fuel. I know it doesn't say it's flex fuel, but I think it would probably be okay and survive. Mostly everything now can run E85, but. I don't think this one does. I really don't. I don't think E85 is that clear. I don't know. We, we need to see a video of poor E85. Uh, I never see my E85, even in the race cars. It goes straight in the car. I've never had a problem. It doesn't say 87, 91. Why is Ford so much better about this? Ford prints what it is right there. Yeah. Here's a Ford for you guys, so you know how much better they are. <laughs> e E15, E0 to E15 right there. Tells you what it is. Thanks, Ford. I don't know. It really, like, whatever that is, is not gasoline. What's coming out of there looks like pure water. Uh, I'd have to ask her where she I, I, I'd say we try lighting it, but it will explode no matter what that is. Well, it smells it. a little like gas. We're lighting it. <laughs> the weeds ain't growing here for a long time. It's just the whole house is gone, honestly. <laughs> what happened? I can't see the bottom of the bucket. That, it's not gasoline, whatever this is. Whatever's coming out of this car is not gasoline. They did tell us from the get-go that it stopped running as soon as she put gas in it. It's, it has a full, well, not now, but. It, it still has a full tank, tank though. Gas, it's right. full, it's gonna take us so long and to I get rid of. I don't know where she filled it up. Yep. Well, tell us in the comments below, is E85 perfectly clear? Those mega mixer pumps only mix to E30, which E30 is yeah, like, E30's enough that like, the engine's gonna be incredibly upset. Like it's not gonna wanna run. Oh, this but e this, e we ran this on starting fluid for like a minute. It, it runs so well on starting fine. fluid. It runs beautifully. But it will not, it won't maintain on fuel and it's, it's getting all the fuel it needs. Yeah. So it's not like 
it's not you know the injectors or the fuel but none of that it's all working like it's supposed to we got to get this tank but empty if, all right guys we're in here looking for the relay for the fuel pump which i don't think exists i think this is one of those solid state fuel pump modules that's in the back of the car like everything is now but there is a fuse f05 for flex fuel so i do think it has a flex fuel sensor hiding in here somewhere and it can probably run on e85 um it's probably a thing but somewhere a second ago i saw fuel pump fuel pump F43, it's a fuse, unfortunately. I can't find a uh, fuel pump. I don't think there's any way we can force the fuel pump on other than the Autel. So that's what we've been doing, but it's so slow. We're pumping out like a cup at a time. So we'll probably have to turn the fuel pump on like 400 times to empty the tank. But if that's all we have to do to not put an engine in this car, we're clearly gonna keep pushing the button. That's how we got all the fuel that you guys just saw into that bucket. Just run, stop, run, stop all over and over and over. So I'll see what I can come up with here. What we could do, <laughs> this is a terrible idea, but you know it'll work. Um, My brass punch, genius. Drain the fuel tank, throw it away, put it in the trash <laughs> the way we want to do salvage Stick cars. Plug back in. That's right, that's there right. No, I was gonna say, pop the charge pipe back off and run it on uh, starting fluid and let the fuel pump pump the entire tank empty. It'll. Yeah. They'd It'll do, do it. It'll do it pretty fast. Absolutely. It's not, a, it's not the worst idea. You better it do. would give us all of the pressure. All right, guys. It's been 30 minutes of hitting on, off, on, off, on, off. I've, I've been doing it for a long time because there was no other way to keep the fuel pump running other than like starting the engine on starting fluid, like we said, and keeping the engine running. Sketchy. Totally sketchy. So we've dumped five gallons of fresh premium into the tank. It does say that this thing only takes premium. Uh, even though it might have a fuse for a flex fuel sensor, it looks like it should not be running on flex fuel according to the manual. It even says it can't even run on E30. So, the time has come. Yeah, it's on page 251 there in the manual. But, it's time to try this out. So, we're gonna shut the thing off. It says, do not use any fuel labeled E85 or flex fuel. Do not use gasoline with ethanol levels greater than 15% by volume. Wouldn't it be nice if they printed that on the fuel ring. All right, we just hooked the fuel line back up. The time has come. It's, it's tried to start. Here we go again. Without backfire. Yeah, oh, no, it's running perfectly. I don't want to rev it. I'm just... Don't rev it. <laughs> we need to let this thing idle. I'm... Let's just go home and let it run itself out of gas. That's, <laughs> we need it to die. What I should do is drive it home. We, I don't know if I'd drive it yet. Look, but it's running. The gas, go look at the gas in there again. Oh yeah, yeah, Ch check this out guys. This is after we pumped tons and tons and tons of fuel out and we put Three, uh, three to four gallons of fresh 91 in, and then we just ran. That's at least a half gallon of real gas. Yes. And now that's the difference. You can see the bottom and you can see a brown tank. Absolutely, you can in see a, the yellow brown gas. In a blue color. bucket. Yes. You couldn't see that with the other one. Oh, bucket. the other stuff was perfectly why clear slash we, milky. Why don't we start with that? Why would we start with that? It just, I mean, it doesn't make sense. Oh, unbelievable. So anyway, the Equinox is fixed. <laughs> I don't know, I mean. We spent a lot of good, good. The engine is obviously in time. Yeah, it's obviously it in sounds, time. It sounds, the engine sounds great. I mean, we verified the timing. It was just, the backfires were bad fuel. That's what it was. It's unbelievable. I don't know so, what that fuel was. Yeah, we don't know what it was, but it's really crazy that bad fuel was causing all those backfires that made us think it was timing all along. And at least now we know that the reluctor is good. That's, you know, one TSB knocked out. We know the timing's good. We really verified a lot of important things just to find out that it had bad gas in it. I, I don't know if I've ever seen gas like that. Never, never in my life. Crazy. It's, it's idling like a champ. It runs perfectly. It's got some temp in it. It, all that cranky. <laughs> in reality, we were just trying to hook your sister up with a very in-depth 
intake valve cleaning service. If she wanted me to put gas in her car, all she had to do was that. <laughs> I would have just done it. You don't have to try to kill the engine <laughs> to get us to put gas in your car. Out of foot premium, whatever. <laughs> what, we we could have went to Bucky's for all I care. This I'm is how to make your husband fill up your car every time. You just have to kill one engine. And from then on, you don't have to put gas in it anymore. Well, yeah, because we had to... <laughs> We had to like, I mean, it's midnight. We've been working on this car since two. Yeah, we put and we were literally racking our brains like, is it a something that maybe she accidentally put diesel in it, even though she can't put diesel in it. Diesel would not fit. Hey, we're almost down to a quarter tank. Yeah. We should go get a bunch more premium and some heat and make it suck all that in. Well, I can't go anywhere and get anything right now. We do need more heat. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. We could. Well, is there any gas station that's open right now? Gas station's open for sure. Cases is open. I mean, more fuel, and then we can put heat in we tomorrow, really, and then really, she can go back to driving it. We should really drive it to Quick Trip over there, put a premium in it. Quick Trip gas it. is all you can really trust. Let's drive it to Quick Trip, put gas in it, never shut it off. Never shut it off. And put heat in it, and then drive it back. There's a does. great chance that this dies on the way to Quick Trip, and we're <laughs> stuck. <laughs> I'll walk back. And... <laughs> it, it, it's hesitated one time, but I, I heard that hesitation. But uh, I mean, I, I feel like. <laughs> That's pretty good. Cause there's still gonna be whatever's in the tank. There's yeah. still some in there. There's still trash in this thing for sure. Yeah. I don't know what that was. Well, at least it's off the lift. Oh, we we gotta lift it back up. We have to put the, put the, the tray, tray back on. on. Yeah. Yep. But it needs to run for a while. I gotta charge it a lot of labor out. Yeah, we gotta charge her. Well, we're probably at 5,000 in labor for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I gotta put a markup on all those parts. Oh yeah, yeah, because we've got fresh valve cover gaskets and O-rings on the injectors. All that stuff had to be replaced. So yeah, triple all that. We have to, we have to take the valve cover back off. What? Why? <laughs> I just wanted to add more. Time. Oh okay. Well. <laughs> there you go, guys. It runs. Here's the qu real question: Is do we need to drain the oil and put this oil in? We put the standard O'Reilly's full synthetic in this. And you guys know, I've seen the results of Royal Purple perfectly cleaning valve trains out. So Eric had already bought Royal Purple to put in this, but I think we're gonna we'll probably, probably run the O'Reilly's full synthetic. The thing is we also figured we might flush any walnut dust and stuff into that oil. So maybe we bring it back with the under tray off and then uh, change it to Royal Purple. Throw a wick, something. Yeah, purple. maybe tomorrow, but for now, yeah, yeah, yeah. we should go fill this up with fresh gas yeah, and it'll be fixed. Let's go see what happens. All right, we're gonna take two cars. Yeah. <laughs> that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop. WatchJR.com for cool shirts, not like this. And please, like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do. And I will talk to you next time. And now I can't blame Chevrolet for this. <laughs> I, bro, I don't. I Those can't believe we didn't start. It's it's quarter tank. I figure it's somewhere between a quarter and an eighth. It has to be. All right. Because I had you pump a half gallon back out of three, so maybe it has three gallons in it. Well, there she is, the old Equinox going down the road, no problem at all. Next up, we got to fix this thing. Now it's got problems. Well, there you go. We filled her up with Quick Trip's guaranteed gasoline, and we are headed back to the shop with a full tank of 91 and that car should be running on 91 it says that right in the manual but uh i guess this was just a three day tons of hours tons of money spent commercial for quick trips guaranteed gasoline